OK, let's see what this first set of questions throws up for you then, Nick. Uh, off you go. From 1947 to 1952, Ronald Reagan served as president of which body? Teamsters Union, the National Rifle Association or the Screen Actors Guild? OK, well, um, I don't think it's the Teamsters Union. That's uh, to do with, uh, well, union, so I don't think it would really be... and I don't think it'd be anything to do with that. Uh, National Rifle Association, uh, it just doesn't seem like a sort of thing a president might be in charge of, really. Uh, I believe Ronald Reagan might have been an actor before he was a president, so I will go with Screen Actors Guild. Yeah, I certainly was an actor before, and uh, it was the Screen Actors Guild that he was president of. Five years. CJ, the prince known as John of Gaunt, was born in which century? 10th, 12th or 14th? Uh, he has to have been born in the 14th. Any more specific for me? It is the right answer. Uh, I can't give you an exact date, but I just know he was uh, when he was around. <laughs> Any other record? Uh, I would think about 1360, 1370. 1340. Oh, well, 1340. 1340. OK, well, uh, right answer there from CJ. One each. Nick, next one for you. Which ancient people referred to their empire as being divided into red land and black land due to the colour of the soil? Egyptian, Mayan or Aztec? OK, well, I don't think it's going to be Egyptian because um, sand's more of a, a yellow colour, so I think I can immediately uh, exclude Egyptian uh, from my choice. Uh, my own Aztec, I'd say the Aztec scene, when I think the Aztecs in my mind, I, th I can see a lot of uh, red and black, so I'll, I'll go with Aztec, I think, for that reason. OK, Aztec for um, red land and black land. It is not, it's incorrect, Nick, um, Eggheads, uh, CJ. Mayan. It's Egypt, I think. Mayan? No, it's, uh, it's, it's Egypt, it's Egypt. Uh, from Pat there, and um, the Black Land, presumably, are the fertile bits around the Nile. The Nile, yeah. And, uh, yes, indeed, the, uh, the sandy, the, the red land, uh, they did call it, uh, they did call it red. So, Egyptian there, Nick, and uh, nothing on the board for you. See what CJ does with his second question. The 19th century Luddite movement began around which English city? Nottingham, Manchester or Plymouth? I didn't actually know the city, but um, I always associate them with Manchester. Um, but did it start there? Uh, I think it was 1811 it started. 1811 to 1816 are the usual dates given for it. Um, it, it must be Manchester. It was, it was the revolt against all the machines taking everyone else's jobs, and Manchester was the, the most um, industrialised area, so... I have to go for Manchester. OK, Manchester you've gone for. It's not the right answer. Oh. No, because it was uh, weaving specifically, wasn't it? And no, it's, not a, we, it's Nottingham. Oh. Is that lace weaving, OK? It's, I mean, big lace centre. Yeah. Would be in Nottingham, yeah. yeah. And just to explain uh, for people uh, the term Luddite, this is to do with some... I mean, it's often used now as a generic term, isn't yeah. it, for somebody who opposes change? Yeah. Well, they had the, the leader of the movement, if you like, was a character called Ned Ludd, and they set out to smash machinery which they saw as destroying their livelihoods. Handloom weavers. Handloom weavers, yeah. OK, well, uh, Luddism uh, started in and around Nottingham. So, uh, let's off there, Nick. It's still all square, everything to play for. Here's your next question. In the 1950s, Todor Zhivkov became the effective leader of which country? Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia or East Germany? In the 1950s, Todor Zhivkov became the effective leader of which country? I'm going to spell the name for you because uh, my uh, pronunciation may not be the finest. Um, Zhivkov is Z-H-I-V-K-O-V. -V. First name, Todor, Todor, T-O-D-O-R. OK, well, this would be just after World War II when uh, Russia was probably uh, mainly in charge of East Germany. Uh, so it makes sense for it to be East Germany but I'm going to exclude it because I'd imagine there might be a more German-sounding name in charge by then. Um, with the choice of Bulgaria or Czechoslovakia left, I'm just going to go for a shot in the dark with uh, Czechoslovakia. OK. Narrowed it down to those two and pick the wrong one. It's Bulgaria. OK. Bulgaria. So, a chance, in spite of getting his second one wrong, a chance for CJ to wrap up the round. CJ, printing pioneer, William Caxton produced the first printed work in English while living where? Florence, Lyon or Bruges? I don't think it's Florence. Um, I didn't know this when you asked the question, but as soon as the options came up, Bruges leapt out at me. I'm hoping I've just 
read this somewhere, and I hope I haven't got the wrong one, but Bruges just leapt out at me, so I'll try Bruges. Leaping out. It is the right answer, CJ. Bruges is where William Caxton was based when he produced his first printed work, which means uh, you're not going to be in the final round, Nick. Um, CJ's just taken that round 2-1. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, after that head-to-head, -head, CJ returned triumphant from the question room. Means all the airheads are still there and one member of Loughborough's Gone Talent has gone. That's Nick. And our next head-to-head -to -head today, this is music. Who'd like to play this? Music? I don't want to play music. It's got best. to be. Yeah, but then I'd rather... I, I mean, I, I can't do music. You can do music. Can you go and cheer Matt Jane? Yeah, all right. I'll go for it. <laughs> Take one for the team. <laughs> Uh, yeah, James yeah. is going to choose James to do All music. Right. James, take one for the team. Take an egghead <laughs> out for the team. <laughs> Who will you play from the eggheads, anyone apart from CJ? <sighs> what do you I think? think? I think maybe Chris, to be honest. I, I think Chris generally struggles for things pre-1960, so it's <laughs> 1960. Yeah, <laughs> yeah post that. You cheat the so-and-so. You said it yourself. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> OK, let's have James and Chris <laughs> into the question room, please. Well, uh, James, we're going to test your musical knowledge uh, in a moment. What kind of music do you like? Um, quite eclectic taste. Well, I'd say eclectic, but other people would probably say pretty poor. So <laughs> it ranges from a bit of hip-hop um, to, you know, classical and oh. even some, uh, some Disney um, songs thrown in there at some point. So. <laughs> oh, right, it is eclectic. Yeah, I think it's great. OK, uh, first or second, James? Um, I'll go second, please. Chris, first question then. In musical notation, what name is given to the symbol which, when written next to a note, raises its pitch by a semitone? Is it sharp, strike, or second? That's a thing. Looks like a pan, uh, the uh, pan sign on a keypad. It's a sharp. It is a sharp. Mm. Yes, correct. James, Keith Richards is most associated with which instrument in the Rolling Stones? Drums, guitar, or saxophone? Keith Richards is most associated with which instrument in the Rolling Stones? Um, I, I know it's definitely not saxophone. Um, I don't think it's drums, because I think I remember that, so I'm going to go for guitars. So, well, guitar, rather. Yeah, guitar is correct, <laughs> of course, yes, Keith Richards. And coconuts. <laughs> Same to you. You know that, when he injured himself very oh, badly, falling out, tree. climbing a tree, oh, trying to yes. get Oh, yes, yes. Stay with me, eggheads. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long day. She's as sharp as pins, that one, aren't they? <laughs> um, Chris, Glenn Fry and Don Henley were two of the founding members of which West Coast rock group? The Eagles, the Doors, or the Beach Boys? They're two of the Eagles, Dermot. Yes, they are. OK, two points to you. And back to you, James. Going to make you a star in 1974 was the first UK number one single for which singer? Elton John, David Essex, or Alvin Stardust? Um, well, I know it's definitely not Elton John, so I can rule that out in my mind. Um, David Essex, uh, I think, yeah, he was, he was somewhere in the 70s. What, what was the year again? 1974, the song, Gonna Make You a Star. I've just got a feeling like it might be Alvin Stardust, but I'm not 100% sure. So, yeah, I'll go for that. OK, Gonna Make You a Star in 1974 was a number one for David Essex, oh. which you were thinking of. Yeah. David Essex. Well, uh, it means Chris can win the round if he gives me a correct answer here. The composer Franz Schubert was initially buried at his own request in close proximity to which other musical great? Beethoven, Vivaldi or Handel? Hmm. So he died about 1840-odd, didn't he? Vivaldi and Handel were, I think, a bit too long dead by then, so it must have been Beethoven. Ah, knowing the dates of the great composers there's the right answer yes mm. beethoven chris and uh, that three out of three has given you the round no need to put another question to you james it means you won't be in the final round would you both please come back and join your teams um well two members of loughborough's got talent gone now all the eggheads still there let's get one of them out shall we and choose a player to play this arts and books round coming up next who's it to be um chris Louise or Kieran? Do you want to have a go at that, Lou? Yeah. Go on, Lou. I really don't want to have a go at that. Yeah. No, 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 no,
Yeah. Okay, it looks like right, it might yeah, be Louise me. is going to do it, yeah. <laughs> really keen to do it, Louise. <laughs> Can't you do it, Kieran? My mum's an English teacher, I'm sure she'll be just fine. <laughs> right, well, uh, pick an egghead then. CJ and Chris have played, as you know, so you've got Pat Barry or Daphne. I'll go with Daphne, please. Daphne. Thank you. OK, let's have you both in the question room, please, then. Louise and Daphne. Uh, Louise, would you like to go first or second? Um, I'll go first, please, Dermot. Good luck. Here we go. The technique of moulding a design on a surface so that it stands out in relief is known as what? Embossing, ennobling or enlightening? Um, well, I think this is what they do for sort of like um, greetings cards where they make a picture stand out. And I think it's called embossing. So that would be my answer. OK, embossing, that's correct. One to you. Daphne, which French word is used to mean the total output of an artist? Ochre, objet or oeuvre? <laughs> I wish you do this with here. My French is rubbish. My pronunciation, but it's oeuvre. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's, oh. it's the right answer. The other records like it because like it it's correct, yes. One green there, so one each. Back to you, Louise. Which British author, twice nominated for the Booker Prize, is best known for his satires about academic life? Salman Rushdie, David Lodge or Ian Banks? Well, I don't think it's Ian Banks for some reason. And I thought Salman Rushdie wrote about religion. So I'm going to go for David Lodge. David Lodge, satires about academic life is the right answer. Yeah. Two to you. Daphne, what is the title of Alan Bennett's anthology of autobiographical writings published in 2005? Is it Unwritten Rules, Unheard Voices or Untold Stories? Sorry, Emma, I'm having to think. Um, I think, <laughs> my favourite word, I think it's Untold Stories. Untold stories, you think? What is the title of Alan Bennett's anthology of autobiographical writings published in 2005? That's the question. The answer is untold stories. It's correct, Daphne. <laughs> Two each, both going very strongly. Louise, which verse measure was used by Dante to write his divine comedy? Is it Sestina, Terza Rima, or Alcaic Stanza? I have absolutely no idea here. Um, I'm just going to have to take a stab in the dark at Alcaic Stanza. OK. Daphne? <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think I'd have gone for Terza Rima. It is Terza Rima. Uh, the uh, measure in which the uh, Divine Comedy is written. In any of you eggheads read it? Some of it, yeah, some yeah. of it. <laughs> it's a very long poem. <laughs> OK, well, uh, Louise, they're stumbling on the third question and gives Daphne an opportunity. Daphne, the novels Ragtime and Billy Bathgate were written by which American author? E. L. Doctorow, Bernard Melamud or William Styron? That is E. L. Doctorow. Sorry. Oh, I hate it when you do that, Daphne, because you, <laughs> you know you're right. Yeah, know. <laughs> it is the correct answer. E.L. Doctorow wrote uh, Ragtime and Billy Bathgate, which means the story of this round is very close, but Daphne's won it and no place for you in the final round. Louise, would you both please come back and join your team?